Today, we're going to take a closer look at something you've probably seen a thousand times, the high angle shot. If used right, this shot will take your filmmaking literally to the next level. So what is a high angle shot? A high angle shot is a shot where the camera points down at something. It can be subtle, like this, or extreme, like this. It can be a tight shot, or it can be very wide. High angle shots are awesome, but I've noticed that very few filmmakers make good use of them. Oftentimes they're used arbitrarily, just because they kind of look cool. But I want to take a closer look at how you can maximize their impact in your next project. High angle shots have three primary functions. They can convey narrative information, they can elicit emotional responses in the viewer, and they can convey something about a character. Here's a fairly common type of high angle shot. It's a narrative high angle shot. A big dramatic crane shot that sweeps over a scene. The primary purpose here is narrative. From above, we can see more of the world. The shot establishes context for our scene and is most useful to show landscapes or large crowds which would be difficult to capture if the camera were positioned too low to the ground. The thing to remember about a narrative high angle shot is that it's not meant to draw too much attention to itself or evoke a strong visceral response. It doesn't want to throw us off balance. The angle is pretty shallow, meaning the camera points down only slightly. But some high angle shots are meant to give us a visceral thrill. The second type of high angle shot is the visceral high angle. These high angles are designed to give you a sense of vertigo. Don't worry, I'm totally on top of this. Here's a great high angle shot from Harold Lloyd's Safety Last. Some people call it this a bird's eye view or an overhead shot where the camera points straight down from a high place. A shot like this doesn't usually convey new information about the scene, but it definitely makes an emotional impact. It makes us feel uneasy or anxious. Check out this moment from Hitchcock's North by Northwest. Listen to me, I have nothing to do with this. Roger Thornhill runs out of the UN building and there's no one dangling from a precipice, but we're looking straight down nonetheless. And in this scene from Minority Report, Spielberg makes us feel much the same way. Again, no dangling hero, but boy is it anxiety inducing. These last two bird's eye shots connect us to a third type of high angle, which often combines elements of narrative and visceral emotion. It's the character-driven high angle shot. This type of high angle shot makes a character appear smaller or weaker. This can be both a narrative device communicating to us that the character is vulnerable, and it can also be made visceral too, so we can connect to their vulnerability. We feel for them. In some cases, we fear for them. Some filmmakers use high angle shots for very specific narrative emotional purposes. Most notable among these is Hitchcock himself. Consistently in Hitchcock films, when his characters are in jeopardy, he positions the camera high above them. Again and again, the high angle shot shows us characters who are in trouble on the run or about to encounter mortal peril. In a Hitchcock film, a high angle shot always screams danger, even when we don't yet know there's something dangerous about to happen. Take the opening shot of the crop duster sequence in North by Northwest. It's a high angle shot as the bus approaches and Thornhill steps off. Many filmmakers would have opted for something closer to the ground, but not Hitchcock. By opening the scene with a high angle, he introduces a subtle note of danger. And by placing his character into the shot, Hitchcock alerts us subconsciously that Roger Thornhill is in danger. We're primed, we're anxious. So even though the scene is long and methodical, we are on the edge of our seats. So if you're a filmmaker and want to make the most out of the high angle shot, here's how it breaks down. If you want to establish the scale of a crowd or the layout of a landscape, use a narrative high angle shot. Push the camera up and keep the angle somewhat shallow. Establish your landscape and you're done. But if your audience needs a jolt or a thrill, if you need to inject tension, vertigo, or to punch up the action, try a visceral shot by pushing your high angle to the extremes, extreme height or a sharp angle. Finally, 
If you want to emphasize the danger to your characters and want to make weak characters seem weaker, try framing them in high angle. Now that you've got a good grip on high angle shots, it's time to put them to use. Whether you prepare your shot list with a spreadsheet, pen and paper, or with shot listing software like Studio Binder, give the high angle shot some love. And when you're ready to expand your cinematic knowledge a little more, check out our other videos. We've got great stuff on our channel and new content coming all the time. If you like this video, make sure you share and subscribe. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so that you're notified when new videos come out. Keep your cameras rolling, and until next time, break a lens.